Thank you for having me. So let's start. So I'm here today to inspire you. So you, usually I give talks which are quite technical, and they're usually about Google Assistant, Amazon, Alexa. But today, if you came to see code, there won't be there any. So uh, today I wanted to share with you. Um, Oh, and it went wrong. It's all right. So uh, today I wanted to share with you a few lessons. So during my lifetime, I was changing careers. And um, it, it went pretty much like that. So I was born in Russia, then I moved to Germany. And I used to work uh, in Stuttgart uh, for, more than, for almost 10 years uh, as a research scientist. And I was doing quantum chemistry and computational uh, chemistry. Uh, for medicine, for basically medical reactions. And um, during that time, I found myself uh, in myself passion for translation. So then later, very soon after that, I became a professional translator and started translating for companies like Twitter, Facebook, Foursquare, Runkeeper. Uh, I think it was mainly because I just learned German. So by that time, I just realized that it's a really good way to know three languages and translate them in any directions. Later, I uh, did a thesis defense and became PhD in quantum chemistry. And then later, Google stole me uh, first as a volunteer for Google uh, Developer Group in Stuttgart. Um, and uh, later, I joined uh, Google uh, first in Munich and later in Hamburg as a full-time employee. Uh, so that was right from the chemistry through translation through the volunteering event management uh, all the way to marketing and technology at Google. Um, after Google, I was stolen by a company called Todoist where uh, they asked me to manage a, a team of 14 people uh, from all over the world. And this is how I started my journey of working remotely for many, many years, uh, pretty much up to now, up uh, until December, let's say. <laughs> uh, during time, my time at To Do is I moved to the UK. And uh, there, I started advocating for women in technology. I realized that even in such advanced countries uh, like United Kingdom, there is a huge problem where women are either not in technology or they have uh, situations where they cannot ask for raise, they, they don't know, they don't get uh, maybe promotions, etc. They uh, are being fired for becoming moms, etc. So that is uh, there are lots of big big problems. Uh, a bit later, I did a really nice course. So if you didn't haven't done that, it's amazing technology entrepreneurship at Stanford, partly online, partly offline, and. Um, after that, Google uh, invited me to become a mentor for marketing, which I never studied. Uh, I never worked in, in this area. Um, uh, in their seat uh, stage level uh, incubator accelerator in uh, London. Then uh, later I became a mom. And I added here because this is a life journey. It's not just career journey. And I will later show you how it changed a lot. Um, once I became a parent, I started realizing that uh, we as women and girls as future women are facing a huge problem with all the, you know, those pink toys and those um, things that you don't belong here, etc. in technology. So I dedicated uh, a lot of time uh, trying to solve this for my daughter and all other girls, um, at least in London, where uh, sometimes in poor neighborhood, um, you literally don't have computer science at school or you have it at the last year of your school, so you're missing a lot. You just can't compete with people who are, going, who are privileged and going to good schools and have computer science for all the years they are at school. Uh, after that, I became a director at Motorworld. This is the New York-based New York company. And the same year, uh, Google uh, asked me to do interviews, a uh, few interviews, uh, because they saw that I might be a good candidate for Google Assistant DDE. And that was, again, scary and quite challenging. Um, uh, but I passed them. And uh, this is one of the reasons I'm here today, because the, the, the goal of GDE is, if I'm sure if some of you know of this program, is to spread the, the knowledge uh, about technology. For me, that's the uh, Google Assistant, where I'm using particularly Dialogflow, Firebase, well, JavaScript. Um, and yeah, helping people to build uh, applications for Google Assistant. Um, 
I continued promoting uh, women in tech in different areas, and that includes Women in Voice, Anita Borg, a London chapter. And uh, during all the time I was speaking, so more than 200 uh, events in 20 plus uh, different countries, including Germany. And uh, yeah, I'm proud to say that my daughter was at almost all of these countries together with me. And actually, she was on stage at Code Emotion Milan uh, last year. Or was it Amsterdam? I think it was Amsterdam last year. Um, giving talk for maybe some of you, maybe other audience, but yeah, Code Emotion is super inclusive and I'm really grateful about that. So why I'm telling you this? I told you this journey because during all those career changes, uh, which are quite dramatic, I learned 10 things and I wanted to share them. Uh, these are the learnings from pretty much 10 plus almost 15 years. Uh, some of them are mistakes, some of them are just lessons that I learned, and I wanted to make sure that maybe you don't repeat them. Um, so first of all, believe in yourself. And that might sound quite obvious, but it's really hard, especially for women or other underrepresented people. It's really, really hard. And imposter syndrome is really, it, it's real. I just remember I was sitting, having lunch in the Google office, uh, you know, graduated from university, first in Russia, then in Germany. And there was a colleague next to me, and we just kind of started chatting. And uh, I just asked him, like, you know, where are you from, what are you, where you, did you study? And he was just so casual, and she just said, yeah, I just graduated from Stanford. Uh, not a big deal. And that suddenly, you know, I started suddenly asking myself so many questions, you know, what I'm doing here. I don't even have marketing or technical diploma. I'm just, you know, this little girl from this little city and little country and with the regular. And those, I'm sure lots of you, regardless gender, might sometimes ask. And it takes time and it takes courage. But what I want, to, what I learned is that if you passed through eight or 10 interviews for some company, or you were invited somewhere, or you got a, a project, a, a, a anything else, uh, you probably deserve it because um, such things, you know, as luck, they almost never happen. And this helped me just by thinking, okay, there is a reason, you know, I am here, right here, right now. That helped me to not get uh, just stressed and, and, and get, become a victim of, of imposter syndrome. So that's number one. Uh, yeah, and uh, so trust yourself and try to overcome it. And uh, do the thing that fear you. Uh, you know, you could be sitting at home and never applying for that company, but you literally don't lose anything by going to 200 interviews per year and just giving it a try. Um, number two, be curious and never ever stop learning. So here, um, during my time at Todoist, I was hiring a lot of people, and I got, took some trick from uh, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, which are using it at Google. I don't know if they're using it any, uh, still, but they used to use it in the past. And that is, when you're hiring people, you go through lots of candidates, and you lose lots of time for people who might not be the right fit. What help you to find uh, that this time is still productive, and also, stay curious and learn think is to ask simple question. Come to interview prepared and bring me, and that you can say to every candidate, and bring me, tell me one thing that you believe I didn't know till now. And if every candidate will prepare something that they think you didn't know, the chances are that you will learn so many things. And even if you won't hire those candidates, and obviously you won't hire most of them, you will still learn so many things during that time that you spent interviewing. So this is something that I learned, and I really like the trick because it definitely made me more motivated to you know, interview more people. And that was really exciting. I learned really completely, uh, really exciting and sometimes awkward things, but yeah, uh, learning is learning. And uh, here I have uh, pretty much one principle that every quarter I do three courses. And those are mostly Udacity, Coursera, or EDX. So uh, every day I'm trying to learn one more thing. Sometimes I share them on, with, on Twitter with hashtag today I learned. So that's kind of, so if you don't know, you know what to learn. So you can just go to Twitter and search for hash today I learned. So that is about number two. Number three, dream big. Uh, so sometimes managers, uh, especially in the older age, they will um, try to recommend you to not dream big 
And I think that is a mistake because they will think, uh, and that is especially true for Germany, living here for more than 10 years, I heard lots of times, uh, don't dream big, uh, be practical, be realistic. And that is part of the mentality and that's fine uh, that people think th uh, like that. But I think that uh, you should still try somewhere deep inside dream big and uh, what I do in my particular life. Uh, yeah, dreams should scare you. I create one day maybe list. So if you're familiar, and I'm sure all of you are familiar with David Allen's Getting Things Done, I keep that list right now. It has, I actually counted it this morning. It has 72 dreams that I have and that I really want to bring into life one day. Uh, for me, it's next two, three years, hopefully. And every month I take three of those dreams and then make them just a project, you know, each of them. And that becomes really easy. You just turn them into a project with a particular steps, particular tasks, and they are not dreams anymore. And in the past few years, I went through more than 400 of such dreams, and they became true. So they're not actually, you know, go to Mars. They are quite uh, realistic, but they're still big and require each of them more than 50 steps. And that is something that uh, works for me. Hopefully, it might work for you as well. Number four, so this is something that uh, I think people whom I meet uh, do uh, oftentimes uh, in a, let's say, let's put it this way, in not the most efficient way. So oftentimes people go uh, to events and they network and then you ask them, so what happened? Oh, I met Alex, I met Marina, I met uh, Tim, Tom, etc. And uh, that's pretty much it. So the way I do it, and I think that networking is really, really crucial, and uh, friends are really crucial, and uh, whom you choose to become your friends. I know it sounds a little bit uh, maybe, um, yeah, uh, tricky, because sometimes your friends are coming from all the way from childhood, where they weren't yet you know, ambitious or reliable or any of those things. But I believe that if you will have uh, friends or people surrounding you that will pull you up and then uh, keep you motivated and, and excited and, and ambitious, then you will definitely be uh, try to be just like them. And I think this is really important. Um, so what works for me, uh, when I go to an event, I come prepared. So I, for every event, I create a list of people that I want to meet. How do I do it? First of all, draw speakers, you know? And right now, even at this event, I have a list of people and I already met uh, all almost half of that list uh, this morning, um, people whom I want to meet. And uh, if it's not a speaker, because there are lots of amazing attendees here, right? I just go to Twitter and go through hashtags. Obviously, there will be people who never tweeted, never posted on LinkedIn that they are here, or never you know, posted on Facebook. Well, I mean, obviously, every method has its own uh, problems. But at the same time, this is a good way for you to Oh, let's, let's make it more productive, let's put it this way, and not just go drink beer and then forget it. And very important follow-up. So oftentimes follow-ups look like that. Oh, it was really nice to meet you at Code Emotion Berlin, for example, I'm getting tomorrow. And I'm like, who is this person? Uh, because it's really hard when you're getting 300 uh, LinkedIn requests to remember each of them. So the trick I'm doing oftentimes is I'm putting at the end of the or middle of the conversation something personal. For example, if uh, during conversation I realize that the person is from uh, America, I can mention, oh, by the way, I just came from California. We did this amazing coastal drive from all the way from San Francisco to San Diego. I love the country and the weather was perfect. And then when I follow up, I can mention it and say, it was really good talking to you and sharing, you know, my trip, etc. So the person will connect. And when I started adding a personal touch, and it doesn't need to be always, you know, country, it can be also something about technology, he will be talking about or talked about anything, family situation, or, you know, like say hi to your daughter from my daughter, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, by doing that, you will uh, give that so-called anchor uh, and help people to remember you better. And that worked for me again and increased number of people who actually replied and remembered me um, on LinkedIn uh, dramatically. Number five, get organized and focused and prioritize. So I won't spend too much time here because I feel that Germans are natural about that, but um, 
if you are not German, you should definitely learn from them. Uh, so the way it works for me at home, everything is pretty much like if you watch the friends, Monica, alphabet, uh, it's all alphabetic, you know, chronological, etc. Uh, all the folders, all the things. And what helps me also, uh, oftentimes I see that people, you know, label things and add the folders, and this is obviously a normal thing. One trick I learned, I think all my tags in Gmail, the labels in Gmail, folders in Google Drive, folders on my Mac, my tags in Google Keep, or you can use Evernote, whatever you are using in a note-taking uh, software. And that helps a lot, because you know what you are looking for. If it's a tag called events, it should be events everywhere, and not, you know, trips. Or, or if it's trips, it shouldn't be travel somewhere else. And once I did that a few years ago, it immediately made me so much faster. So just try it. I know it might be obvious for some people. I came up to that uh, just recently, so yeah. Um, number six, get comfortable with selling yourself. So that is tricky, um, mostly because of the school system. There are lots of lots of different ways people, you know, tell you that from all the way, you know, when you went through kindergarten. You know, the, spout, the whale that spouts um, get harpooned, or the nail that sticks out gets hammered down, all kind of things. So you grew up you internalize this uh, understanding and feeling that you should be penalized for so-called showing off. And I really like how Google puts it. There is, a, there is a workshop which was internal and now it's external for everybody called I'm Remarkable. I'm sure again, lots of you know. Where there is a one very good important uh, thing that they mention is it's not a bragging if it's based on facts. So if I will say, you know, I'm... I'm the smartest in this room. Where are the facts, right? That's just not true. Uh, but if I say that uh, I actually recently, you know, increased, for example, uh, um, speed of my application by 20%, you know, 25%, or I brought 80% more users or uh, increased retention, that is based on facts. So whatever is based on facts, you shouldn't. And sometimes you will still feel it's a bragging, but it's not. So you should just push yourself and stop that imposter syndrome which will be kicking in. It's a really the, the worst timing ever. And just understand that whatever is based on facts is not a bragging. Um, yeah, so get comfortable. So what I learned uh, during my time at Google, because uh, my office in Hamburg was not on the ground floor, you always every day take a, a, a lift uh, the upstairs, and I learned to have this 30-second pitch, because people would work on completely different teams. And you just tell people, you know, I'm doing this and this, and da 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 da, da. and I did last time on this, and next month I'm doing that, and by the way, we can grab a coffee, etc. And that is really amazing, especially after you did it 200 times, you just, you know, you just cannot stop doing that again, again and again. So that is about selling. Now, number seven. So this is really close to my heart because volunteering um, is something that I just love doing. And, you know, you start doing volunteering because you think that it will change other people's lives. But you don't notice and it starts changing yours. And this is something that I noticed when I started organizing TEDx in Stuttgart uh, back when I was living in Germany. And uh, Google Developer Group, first in Germany, now, where not, uh, now that I live in London, also uh, in the United Ki in, uh, Kingdom. And lots of lots of other things. And supporting women in tech, supporting children who don't ac have access to computer science education. Uh, supporting uh, pretty much everybody who could have something better, could do better. If you have resources, knowledge, expertise, something that you can share, it really doesn't cost that much, and you really have that really rewarding experience, um, which will definitely come back. I mean, I definitely believe in, let's put it this way, karma, uh, that if you do something good um, to people who whom you can support, then it definitely will come back to you in, in some shape, right? Um, yeah, number eight, be ready to work hard. So that is something that, um, again, I think I learned during my times at Google, where you come into this really ambitious team, 
and uh, you think that, oh my God, I can do everything if I will just you know, be working um, every day and understand everything, but you should realize that sometimes, and at the beginning, you will fail and fail a lot. You will, it will take you some time to just understand how things work for developers. Just if you look at this code base and you are like, oh my God, it will take me like two, three months to actually dig deeper and understand how it all works. And gosh, I hope it's well documented. But, uh, and same for any other um, job uh, in technology, particularly. And that's why I really like what Richard Branson said, that you could do something really, really quickly just to get things done and reach those goals. But I believe that it's really important to actually build a solid foundation be it code again, be it marketing, or whatever you are doing, operations, and not rush and just take your time to dig deeper, to learn things. Tell your manager, honestly, I need time. I want to make sure that I got it all right and that I will do my best and be the best you know, employee I can be. Um, yeah, and that's why be patient. It will take time uh, to excel in what you are doing. Two more, uh, number nine, embrace discomfort and be willing to fail. So yeah, here, uh, like I'm saying, no pain, no gain. I mean, not just me. <laughs> and uh, statistically, uh, the more times you try, the more times you will fail. And I think that um, it's easy to see, especially with uh, job applications. You know, growing up as a, as a, as a uh, again, in a, in a small city in Russia, uh, and then becoming a chemist. Um, I remember that people would tell me, I, I would tell them that I want to work at Google or any other big company uh, from Fang, uh, let's say. And they would tell me, it's just not happening because you are a chemist. And chemists, they don't work at Google, right? And uh, that was one example when I told myself that um, it will be painful because first time, and I first time, by the way, I failed, so I didn't pass uh, my first Google interviews. Well, there are eight of them. Um, first series, it will be painful because sometimes you will be just not knowing some really basic things just because you didn't get diploma in that field, and that's okay. Uh, it's painful, but you just... Yeah, you can just uh, you know sleep and forget about that next morning. But if you keep trying, you can do whatever you and I might I know it might sound cheesy, but you really can do whatever you think uh, and you wish uh, you know you will be doing, you would be doing. And this is something that um, I went through, and lots of lots of my friends went through. And mentoring uh, such people who are not confident became part of my volunteering efforts, where uh, just checking their CV, checking their LinkedIn, just telling them, you know, just just giving them a hug before they go to interview and telling them, it's all right, you will be fine. And seeing that they pass interviews regardless their education, regardless their, you know, if they come from the 10 people startup joining 20,000 people company, it does work. Uh, yeah, and number 10, the last one. Uh, and this is something that uh, the lesson I learned um, just two years ago when I became a mom and um, how it all started. Um, so, uh, yeah, when I was pregnant, I kept going to conferences and, and giving talks and everything. And to lots of people, particularly women, which is kind of weird, um, kept telling me that uh, they actually kept uh, saying me goodbye because they kept telling me that uh, life and particularly your public appearance at the, at the different conferences will be over once you will become a mom. And that struck me. I, I didn't realize. I was like, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm not like dying. I'm just pregnant and I will just become a mom. They're like, yeah, but that's kind of it. Your career is over, etc. cetera. And um, when I heard that, it hurt me first and um, because I trust those women who told me that. And, and they're really respectable uh, women and, and professionals in, their, in, the career, in the technology industry. Uh, but then next morning, I remember waking up and telling myself, I want to dedicate a lot of, lot of time proving them and proving everybody else that it is possible to combine career, combine public speaking, combine whatever you want to combine with parenting. And this is what I did. Um, this is our family, and you can see that uh, uh, our daughter, she been pretty much everywhere. So she been to, I think, three Google IOs, uh, to F8 Facebook conference, 
to 60 or 80 plus other conferences uh, in 15 different countries. Uh, uh, this is the Code Club. It says from nine years old that they let her come even though she was just six months old. Um, and yeah, um, so what I learned from being mom in tech is that you can't procrastinate anymore. So before uh, I became a mom, you know, you kind of drink tea and then you do stuff and then you go somewhere, hang out, and then you come back, finish stuff at home, and then um, you can do something else, you know? Um, once you become a mom, every single minute counts. You know, baby is sleeping, you either working or you're doing something or you do some calls or you applying somewhere. So I think this was the biggest change that there is really no more procrastination for me. <laughs> um, then slightly lowering expectations. Uh, you know, um, just telling yourself uh, if uh, orange on this slide is slightly darker than the orange color on the previous slide, that's okay. You know, just it's fine, you shouldn't really stress out about that. Um, and the last thing is not, don't be afraid to ask partner for help. As you can see, uh, me and my husband, we are pretty much everywhere together. Uh, he's uh, also a developer at Facebook and uh, we go to all conferences together. You can see our daughter, she went with us to Hackathon in, from Intuit, which we actually won. So thank you, Emily. <laughs> and yeah, so as you can see that, uh, uh, being a mom doesn't really change anything. And this is one of my favorite photos. This is actually the keynote at DroidCon Dubai last year, where she's just casually hanging on me, uh, distracting people in the room. Well, not my fault, uh, she is cute. But uh, the thing is, the truth is that if people respect you, if people came to hear what you have to say, then I think, and I truly believe, it should become a norm for children to be in the room, of course, as long as they don't distract you as much as you don't really hear me, right? Um, and that's why I dedicated a lot of time doing just that. And the last thing which I wanted to show you is how much support I'm getting from community. And this is very important. Through all those lessons, uh, 10 lessons which I just showed you, there are things which I, I wasn't sure, I was exploring, failing, succeeding. And with Mom in Tech, I was not sure, you know, even more uh, because there were not that many role models. And you can't become what you don't see, right? And that's why uh, having support from community was really, really important. And it's really amazing. It turns out people are actually loving uh, seeing younger generation and, and just reminding themselves that it's okay to have family. It's okay to combine it with career. And on the left side, this is uh, actually head of diversity and inclusion at Google, Natalie Villalobos. So really, really amazing uh, person. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. So to combine all the 10 things uh, which I learned, I think the most crucial thing is to believe yourself. And that is something that um, if you believe in yourself, you can do pretty much anything, ch including changing your career from chemist to translator to marketing to developer and to mom and back to developer. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, then you can, uh, I think, uh, ask them. You have a microphone, right? So yeah, thank minutes. you very much. If anyone has questions, feel free to ask. Questions, comments, if you don't agree with any of those lessons or anybody. <laughs> Oh, by the way, uh, you can always reach out to me uh, on Twitter or uh, there are all contacts on the website, reg uh, regardless if you, you know, want uh, uh, any questions about uh, working at big companies or becoming a Google Developer Expert, GD program, or becoming translator, becoming games, anything, uh, or being a mom in tech. So if you don't have questions right now, you can definitely reach out to me afterwards uh, on social media. I think that's Thank it. you. Very good. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much again.